The Trisulfjellet dominates the skyline, standing 1,132 meters high. The solitary mountain is at the center of Norway's biggest skiing area. The pistes have a combined length of 71 kilometers. Skiing instructor Ulrika Pedersen has worked here for six years and knows the place well. We have 66 uh, alpine slopes, and we have uh, cross-country tracks going all the way around the mountain. And we also have, we have 31 uh, lifts of different kinds. The skiing season here begins in late October and runs through May 1st. Most of the visitors come from Scandinavia. But despite its popularity, the waits are short, even in peak season. Visitors should be braced for extreme temperatures. So what's a little bit special with the climate here in Triso is that we, um, it's very often that it's uh, this inverted climate. It's warm on the top and it's very cold down in the village. So sometimes I can have, because I live down in the village, minus 25 when I wake up in the morning, I go, oh, <laughs> and then when you come up to the mountain, it's only minus 15 or minus 10, and it's, ah, it's really nice. The summit offers spectacular views all around. You can see as far as Sweden. The border is about 20 kilometers away. Ulrika Pedersen is herself from Sweden. She lives in Trisil together with her Norwegian boyfriend. Inter-Scandinavian harmony is par for the course here. It works very good. The Norwegians are very um, used to the Swedish language. It's uh, very similar, though we have some words that are different. And we also... Uh, we think a lot, a lot alike, so it's, um, it feels like home. The entire region around Trisil is a winter sports paradise. Downhill, slalom or cross-country, skiing is an integral part of life here. And if you believe the legends, the story of skiing began with Trisil Knut. He's said to have lived here in the 17th century, wearing skis three meters long. You can find out all about him at the local skiing museum. The main story about Trisse Knut is that he competed with a horse from Elverum to Oslo in Norway, 120 kilometers. And Trisse Knut beat the horse in the race in this 120 kilometers, so he was mostly a cross-country skier. The world's first official ski race was held in Trissel in 1855. And the trophy from 1857 is the world's oldest skiing cup. But Trissel really took off as a resort in the 1950s, when it got its first ski lifts. Back then, they were powered by a tractor engine. But don't worry, the setup has been modernized since then. The museum itself features a jump simulator for tourists. Hotel visitors can look forward to modern spa facilities, and you can even try out some indoor surfing. Trissel also has nighttime skiing, but unlike other resorts, it's not limited to one piste. For night skiing, we have um, two um, jumping parks, one for advanced and one for 
starters. And then we have uh, uh, one, what you call a red slope, which is a bit steeper. And then we have two beginner slopes. Ulrika Pedersen sometimes indulges in nighttime skiing because of the freedom it allows. Obviously, the pace drops in the evening, and you can also travel in style with a horse-drawn sleigh ride. Moose watching expeditions are only available in the summer, though. That's for practical reasons. It's the most promising time of the year. Crystal has a relaxing reputation, but people here also know how to party. You can do an all-nighter and catch the Trissel Fjellet in all its glory at sunrise. <laughs>